Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Welcome to this webinar about the Life Green Grace project, a project led by the CREA, the Italian Council of Agricultural Research and uh, Economics, uh, together with uh, Florence University. Uh, we will have uh, here speaking to us about the project, Professor Laura Mugnai from Florence University. Laura, you want to say hello to... Welcome to everybody. Nice to see and, uh, you. The agronomist Fabio Burroni. Hi to everyone. Uh, Michalakis Christoforo from University of Cyprus. Hello, everybody. Uh, William Antonio Petrucci from Crea uh, Arezzo. Good evening to everybody. And uh, other agronomist Marco Pierucci, who is the consultant, the agronomist consultant of uh, the project. Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, so we have uh, a plenty of uh, speakers. I don't want to lose, uh, to steal their uh, time. Just uh, quickly explain how to interact with with them and to to take the best advantage of this webinar. In the handouts section, you'll find uh, all the uh, presentation of uh, of this webinar, so you'll be able to download it by by now. And uh, also, the webinar will be recorded, and uh, you'll receive uh, the link uh, to access the recording in the follow-up email, which will be sent uh, uh, tonight. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, just uh, uh, type it in the question box uh, and we will answer it uh, at, the, at the end of the webinar. Please uh, always specify to uh, which uh, speaker is addressed to, in order not to avoid the misunderstanding. And uh, for uh, Italian agronomists, uh, uh, I let you aware that uh, in the follow-up email you also this have the possibility to fill the box uh, uh, asking for your um, order number so the educational credits uh, will be uploaded to your account so only be, be patient uh, and uh, uh, because we will do it only at the end of the cycle of four webinars so the next one it will be in april 14. Uh, before starting, uh, just uh, uh, a couple of questions to know uh, each other. So uh, I ask you to, to present uh, yourself. Please uh, tell us uh, if you are a farmer, uh, an agronomist, a uh, free professional, uh, someone working for a public body or for a professional organization to help uh, farmers. You are a researcher or, or a student or uh, you are uh, some other category, and in this case, I please specify in the in the chat. I let you uh, a few seconds. Just uh, click, uh, check on the the box uh, close to the the voice corresponding to your uh, situation, and uh, we will see in a while uh, uh, which is the composition of our audience. Usually, I wait until at least the two thirds of the attendees vote to have some significant EVT for the results. Okay, now we are. So let's see, we have more or less 13% of farmers, 14 of agronomists, 13% again of public bodies a majority of researchers and the students and a 9% of all the um, professionalities. Thank you very much. And uh, the second uh, question we, we ask you is uh, which is your uh, main uh, selector of interest? If uh, the nursery, the viticulture for wine grapes, the viticulture for table grapes, or again, other sectors too. Uh, in this case, you, 
if you have uh, many interests, you can uh, check uh, all the corresponding uh, boxes. But uh, please do uh, to tell us the, the main uh, you you are interested in. Okay, you are quickly voting. Uh, so thank you very much. We can uh, go to see the results in a in a few seconds. Okay, let's see. So uh, according to your interest rate, um, viticultural nursery is a 19%, viticulture for wine production is 85%, uh, table grapes viticulture is 9%, and the other interest rate is only 6%. Thank you very much. So we can uh, stop uh, with uh, First polls, we will have others among the different presentations. So now uh, I ask all uh, the other speakers to uh, switch off their camera and I'll do the same. And uh, William Antonio Petrucci from Korea will give the first speech. Antonio, <coughs> thank you very much. Okay, thank you to you. Okay, good evening uh, to everyone. I'm Dr. Petrucci William Antonio and I work for the CREAVE Research Center and I am in charge of uh, providing you a general overview of the project. The Life Green Grapes project uh, found itself on um, four, uh, principal, four major factors. The first one is this. So, uh, that viticulture in Europe is uh, it co covers about uh, 3 million of hectares, so it's very important. Uh, and the same in Italy. In Italy, it reaches about 700,000 of hectares. But uh, on the other end, as you can see on the right, um, viticulture um, um, uses the majority of the plant protection product uh, in agriculture. Uh, so the fungicides, the herbicides, and insecticides. This is the first consideration about uh, our, our project. The second pillar, uh, the second consideration is that um, it's about uh, the technological development. Um, it is normal nowadays that uh, you can monitor the field condition and, uh, in real time and uh, in our uh, smartphone. And, um, those, uh, those data can be processed by the so-called supporting decision system that are systems able to um, process those data and suggest to the farmer the best moment for the treatment or the risk in the field uh, for, um, for the pest. Uh, the third pillar or the third factor important is the uh, discover that exist in nature uh, some uh, substance that I will name uh, um, for my presentation supporting substance derived from um, different origin like uh, uh, different plant species or um, seaweed or microorganism that are able to help uh, the plants against biotic but also abiotic stresses. Um, the particularity of those uh, substances is that uh, they are very, the, the effectiveness depends very much on the um, many factors. Many factors, so uh, the plant species, the plant cultivar, the timing of the treatment. Uh, so um, this is the, the third pillar. The last one is this, uh, the, EU, the, European, the European Union orientation about uh, the employment of uh, chemical method for pest control. We all know that um, uh, the UE um, set the copper employment for viticulture uh, to a maximum to a mean of uh, 4 kg per hectare per uh, one year. Uh, mm, Originally, it was 6 kg per hectare, so 
the limit was lowered. And uh, in addition, we all know that uh, UA is oriented to, um, to rise the cover of the organic uh, farmer, of organic farming, to, uh, uh, to a limit of at least 25%. So, taking uh, into account all those uh, elements, the objective of the life green grapes is to enhance the defense response in grape vine nursery and vineyards, uh, employing the innovative in the products, the so called uh, supporting substance, in order to lower the synthetic fungicides use. Uh, in general, the, um, the life green grapes aims to enhance the consumer's health, uh, promoting a safe, a safe fruits production and um, in particular defining a supporting strategy for the conversion to the organic farming, uh, so improving the sustainability of the supply chain. Uh, here we can see a um, general economic overview. Uh, the, the, the LIFE project can, can uh, rely on a budget of uh, more than 2 million of uh, euro. Uh, the UA contribute cover about 60% uh, of the cost. Uh, have a duration of uh, four years, so uh, this is the last year. The beneficiary coordinator is the CREA, the research center, and the consortium is composed by seven partners. Um, six partners, um, are from Italy and uh, one partner from Cyprus. Uh, for a more uh, specific objective overview, we can say that uh, the Life Green Grapes aims to draw up to create the, um, some protocols based on the employment of a set of supporting substances uh, or microorganisms and um, <coughs> implementing also the use of the supporting decision system in order to improve the soil biodiversity and to lower the fungicide, fungicides employment. Uh, here, here we can see the composition of the partnership. Uh, we have um, the first is the University of Florence, the DAGRI department, the, the, a public research center, then we have the Cyprus University of Technology, the CAT. Then we have uh, the Prima Forma. Prima Forma is an um, enterprise in charge of uh, uh, manage, uh, especially coordinate all the activity of the partner or the different partners. And uh, the last four are the enterprise uh, involved in the project. So we have uh, the Beringer Blast Italia is a farming enterprise that, um, that produces um, wine. Uh, Viva Fratelli Moroni is a nursery. Consortium with Italia is a nursery consortium. And the last one, Società Agricola Fratelli Italiente, is a farming enterprise that produces table grapes, especially table grapes. Here we have uh, also external supporting partner. Those partners are um, are very important for the project because uh, um, not, uh, it's important that uh, the, um, the, the activity uh, of the project can, can reach the professional farmers. So we, the project can rely on MIVA, uh, an association of uh, vine nursery, the FIVI, the, another farmer association, the Oda of Arezzo, a professional association, the OP Agora, another farmer association, and the Yervu SIP, the International Organization of Vine Nursery. And um, uh, as, you can, um, as you can imagine, the production chains involved in the project are the, the principal for the, the, so the grape vine nursery, the wine grape vines, and the table grape vines. So, I, I finished my presentation. Um, if you are interested in our activities, 
you can follow us in the website reported on the, the on the left or you can write or send an email to the address reported in the center um, i can only thank you for the attention and i let uh, the word to my colleague and uh, thank you a good work thank you thank you very much uh, william also we put uh, the um, the website of the project in the in the chat so everyone will be able to to copy it and paste and uh, and also you'll receive in the follow up email before uh, call uh, fabio to the floor uh, a couple of other questions about the life uh, projects the first one is if uh, before today have you heard about this program life the general the overall life program and uh, the option is no is the first two, the very first time or yes uh, from the press uh, yes from uh, internet from uh, tv or uh, through the word of mouth or so some colleague talking me uh, about uh, about this project also, in this case, you can select uh, uh, more options in case of uh, oh yes. This is useful for us to, to select for the future programs uh, the best uh, way uh, to communicate to the potential uh, audience. Okay, you can uh, go to the see the the first results, then I let uh, Fabio to, to comment them uh, all together. So uh, the main result is no. So 62% of our attendees, uh, uh, we are 120, but right now uh, never heard about the live projects. 12% uh, heard from press, 26 from internet, only 4% from TV, and 6% uh, from the word of mouth of colleagues. So, and uh, the following question is more specific to the Green Grapes Life uh, project, so these specific projects. The questions are the same. Have you ever heard no or yes from press, from TV, from uh, internet, or through some calling uh, in, the, in your chat uh, to share uh, information about your profession. Let's wait for you a few seconds more, but not too much because uh, timing is quite tightened today. Okay, we can uh, we can go to share the results. So 68% never heard about uh, life green grapes so it's more or less the same uh, average than the, the life, general life uh, only two percent from press or tv 23 percent from internet so it seems really that the the way to communicate with projects the more effective is really internet interesting results uh, in my opinion but i let uh, uh, fabio to uh, give his view yes. but first of all i invite you to share your screen fabio yes okay it's perfect okay. it's okay so Thanks. thank you very much see you after your speech Thanks, Giuliano. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks to the organization. I am Fabio Burroni. I am a founder of uh, Agronomy in Vignan Studios, and uh, I work in the project uh, like a crop expert for the nursery, uh, the consortium with Italia and uh, the nursery of Bravers Moroni, and also for the Castle for Gabbiano uh, Winery. Um, I want to start uh, my speech uh, uh, with uh, the title Modern Techniques of Sustainable Planting in Vineyards and Innovation in Viticulture Nursery. 
Um, during my address, I want to speak about the uh, nursery techniques uh, used uh, for uh, the preparation of plant, uh, of, um, plant uh, material uh, preparation. Um, you know, uh, I want to begin with the project uh, uh, motivation. Uh, this is very important uh, items. Uh, offer a superior quality of planting propagating material to favor yields in the nursery and produce benefit in the new vineyards, both for environmental sustainability and for the quality of the production obtained. Um, this is uh, very important because uh, uh, nurserymen can provide uh, a greater value uh, with their plants uh, to the wine chain. Um, like in uh, healthness and uh, longevity terms. But uh, the principal nursery motivation are um, uh, also the resilience of the production system, concern for alien species, uh, new European regulation on controls, uh, and pesticides shortage registered for nurseries. Uh, there are great uh, um, revolution. I want to remind uh, you that uh, the certification in uh, viticulture nursery is uh, mandatory and uh, this is uh, this point are very important uh, uh, for me in the nursery sector. Um, this is uh, uh, the regulation uh, 2031-2016 uh, EU and correlated uh, is um, a new regulation that is starting at the end of 2020 in, um, in Italy, where nursery empowerment with self-control system introduction, optional nursery leak plans, traceability system for end customers, and the health control activity harmonization within the EU. I would like uh, uh, that this indication uh, could, uh, could be used in these uh, plans because uh, um, there are many very, very important. Um, the project Green Grapes uh, um, uh, as an activity for self-control and risk plans uh, because green grapes uh, protocols define when and uh, how to intervene uh, to reduce the potential infection in the nursery. This data can be, can be the future plant's uh, cornerstone. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, a very important uh, ob object uh, to um, uh, for the activity in the, in, in the project. Also, uh, the nursery activities. Uh, I want to see what the project has made in the, in the nursery. Um, uh, even the nursery um, are uh, inside the chain. And I, the, the title of these slides is Where I do we start from? Uh, this chain uh, begins uh, with uh, selectors and uh, breeders uh, and with the nursery that produce uh, the plants uh, to make the new mother plants field inside the commercial uh, nurseries. Um, I write uh, a simple phrase, who really to a good start is half to the battle. This is the real. Um, in these slides, I show uh, a screen house. Um, uh, you can see uh, the many plants in pot uh, and also a small wall uh, to prevent flooding. Uh, screen house is very important to maintain uh, the, um, uh, the plant uh, uh, in healthy because uh, um, flooding, is, flooding is very dangerous uh, to uh, for example, for xiphenema and uh, agrobacteria. Um, also, in, the, in, this, uh, in these slides, you can see the, um, the, the screen house and um, where you can, uh, can see the double net uh, against uh, the aphids and uh, a double door 
um, to maintain um, clean uh, the, uh, the plants. Um, the, uh, the nurserymen. Um, the nurserymen into, um, in the project uh, have cre um, creates a new shown uh, rustic mavar plant field outdoors and um, it is necessary to adopt a practice to limit infection and make resilient plant because it is impossible to protect plants from everything. Um, this is uh, uh, I want to remember that it is impossible to protect a plant from everything only with common pesticide. Um, I have to use uh, all the means that I know. In these slides, I show the new modern mother plant fields. You can see order and cleanliness. Also, for Rustuk, in a new, a new uh, mother plant field on net, um, uh, where uh, we can uh, see also high uh, order and cleanness. But uh, I want to show this. Uh, this is a new method of growing Rustuk, uh, which I can, I can, I hope can be used uh, in the future. Um, because uh, um, I, uh, in this way, I can control grass, uh, I can make uh, treatments uh, and uh, or, uh, all the practice in the, for a good viticulture. But uh, um, I, how was the way confronted to, the lim to limit infection and make resilient plants? I'm, Using a comprehensive holistic uh, approach due to the lack of uh, eradicating active ingredients registered for nursery. There are few molecules registered for uh, defense in nursery uh, against the pest and the pathogen. And the uh, an holistic approach is uh, the basis of a, a, new, a new way to, uh, in, uh, for the nursery. I want to remember you the, um, the hurdle strategy. This is a strategy studied by Romanazzi in 2012 and um, is the development of diseases can be contained by applying this, uh, a series of obstacles to the pathogen, each of, we, of which contribute, contributes to a certain part to the reduction of the diseases. Um, I don't have um, uh, a single uh, mole uh, molecular uh, capable of eradicating the pathogen, but uh, many that can limit, it, uh, can limit its uh, activity or uh, vitality. Nursery, the activity in the nursery, rustic can bad the preparation. Where I determine, determine the appropriate times to use the most interesting commercial disinfectants, introducing trichoderma species and an antagonist agent, and then focus on hydration plant materials. This, uh, in this show, I, in this slide, I show uh, uh, the rooster buds cutting, and uh, I want to not notice uh, schist or bones. Like uh, also in high, where I uh, prepare shown the uh, shown of vitis vinifera. While this is the, uh, uh, the, most, uh, the most dangerous time for the spread of the pathogen, the pathogen is the hydra hydration um, point. And uh, also we can, uh, can see the cold storage, but this is a very important um, uh, point to the spread of the pathogen in the nursery activity. 
Another point, very important, is the callus for forcing, um, where uh, in the project uh, we use the, the water forcing special tank, biocontrol agent use, and grape fruit and all stale extract um, um, extracts. We, in this, uh, in this uh, um, slide, uh, we can uh, say the, the tanks uh, with the, uh, the room uh, of the forcing. Um, an example, but there are, um, uh, we can uh, find uh, another kind of rooms um, in, in the nursery. While uh, this is a traditional uh, forcing system uh, with sawdust, uh, is an ancient method, but um, we can uh, find it uh, in uh, many nurseries in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. In the nursery, uh, we, uh, I, we have used uh, mycorrhizae precursors inoculation, um, uh, tri um, also trichoderma and mycorrhizae were added at the end of nursery production cycle with uh, bentonite. We use um, these um, compounds uh, before fridge storage at 3 de uh, degrees Celsius, before delivery to the client company, or before planting them in the new vineyards. This is an example uh, before planting be, uh, with bentonite in a very simple method, uh, but is a, a very good um, method to, um, to add the, the mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae is uh, a, a very important because, uh, the, is because it improves the quantity of the roots and the um, uh, uh, the, the microbi microbi uh, microbial uh, uh, rhizosphere activities, because it's very, this is uh, very important to um, improve the plant resilience. Uh, because the plant resilience is uh, our uh, immune uh, system. Conclusion: Life project in grapes activity can be integrated into the nursery production cycle. Uh, Protec and Proist uh, works um, and uh, simplify the application of workplace legislation. Uh, favors the work specialization and increase the employee sanitation. Uh, in, for the future, in, um, the, the nurserymen uh, uh, have uh, built a new field of shown mother plants and uh, has been realized. A new vineyard that has been realized in the winery. Plant material produced according to life project indication. In the new vineyard, there are more resilient plants. This, this was our goal. Our goal. The nursery campaign, campaigns involve by uh, nursery plant Frate, uh, Brothers Moroni in uh, Cenaia, Pisa, Toscany. And Van Nursery Plant with Italia Bianchi Carla, Lido di Camaiore, like uh, also in Toscana. The new vineyard has been realized at uh, Castello di Gabbiano in the uh, Chianti Classico area. The stakeholders, uh, the MIVA, the Italian Wine, Wine Nursery, Man, uh, Nursery Man Association, uh, CHIP, the European Wine Nursery Man Committee and FIVI, the Italian Federation of Independent Wine Growers, and also uh, the, the board of uh, the agronomist of uh, Italian agronomist. Thank you for the attention and uh, I wait the question in the question time. To Giuliano. Thank you very much, uh, Fabio. Steve, you gave us a lot of interesting points to, to discuss, uh, and I'm sure that Laura Mugnai will do the same uh, in a while. But uh, before uh, her speech, uh, we have another couple of questions for our attendees. The first one is very simple. Have you ever heard of decision support systems, so-called DSS 
before today. Very simple, yes or no. No. Please vote uh, just checking the the box or the or the dot close to the correct answer. And uh, we will see your results now. Awaiting a few voters more. Okay, let's see the your results. So more or less is uh, half and half, but 52% of our attendees never heard about the decision support systems. So they are in the right place to hear about it and 48% yes. And uh, the second question before Laura's speech is, uh, if you have heard about the so-called biostimulants or resistance inducer products to use in the in the vineyard. In this case, the options are never heard. Yes, I know them, but I never used. Yes, I know them and I use them. Again, only one option for this question. <coughs> Meanwhile, I ask Laura to switch her camera on and her microphone. And uh, let's see quickly your results. Okay, so in this case, only 14% of you never heard about the biostimulants or resistance inducers. 56% know that them and use them, uh, sorry, and never, but never use them, and the 30% know and use these such products. Okay, I, I think uh, that you and, uh, and Marco, Laura, will give us uh, more details about this. I'll send you the control of the screen so you can share your, uh, sorry, I have to, before to to stop the poll okay have you received the not really so i'll do again sorry here we are uh, now yes perfect so we see your screen and now we see, see your it? presentation. Perfect. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. So let's start. So good evening again to everyone. Everyone, and I'm going to show you some uh, another part of the project. As you saw, the, this project is uh, uh, it includes uh, different parts of the vineyard uh, cycle from the beginning, as uh, Fabio just showed, uh, to different type of production, wine grape, table grapes, and so on. And uh, we also included uh, different aspects of the vine vineyard growing, like uh, attention to the soil component uh, and uh, rhizosphere and so on. But uh, today I will just show you some uh, um, aspects of uh, the uh, tools we used to, in order to reduce the uh, impact of uh, fungicides, of uh, chemicals uh, uh, used in plant protection in the vineyard. Uh, we know that uh, this is a big issue for uh, the environment, for consumer health, uh, for the residues of the final crop. And this project uh, uh, really uh, was started uh, years ago when uh, um, this uh, project, this aspect uh, was uh, just uh, growing in attention. And now we know that uh, the reduction of pesticides has become a really uh, main driver in many decisions. And the European Green Deal is, uh, has different aspects, uh, some of which are uh, very focused on agricultural production and reduction of chemicals in agricultural production. 
there are uh, on this uh, uh, on this subject uh, there are strategies for biodiversity and biodiversity has a great impact uh, on uh, um, on the health of the vineyard and so its ability to counteract uh, pests and diseases there are another important part of the european green deal is the strategies for the sustainable usage of chemicals and uh, the farm to fork strategy includes uh, the uh, outcome of the usage of chemicals in the foods that we eat so lots of attention that brought uh, the european community uh, the, the european community to uh, slash to have a, uh, this uh, goal of slashing pesticides usage by 50% by 2030 and increase organic agriculture uh, so that uh, the impact of chemicals uh, is reduced. When we started this project, uh, this uh, uh, aim was not uh, set yet, but we actually um, asked ourselves how we could get uh, something like this, just a 50% reduction in pesticides using alternative products. But control of diseases is not only uh, using a product, uh, uh, it is uh, very important i think to um to mention to remember that uh, um, the decrease of fungicides starts for a correct management i'm making here an example of the uh, grapevine trunk diseases which uh, are a very complex uh, subject in which the management of the vineyard has uh, the greatest impact uh, on uh, the disease development and this is true also for the leaf pathogens like downy mildew, powder mildew, and so on. So the uh, starting a resilient vineyard is uh, of fundamental importance uh, in the ability of the vineyard to uh, re have reduced uh, um, symptoms. And we see there are many aspects that are more and more stressed now, like the management of the farm, the tolerant varieties to be used, uh, disease monitoring, uh, the uh, precision in agriculture that can allow us to improve the disease control management and so on. And the, in this project, in other presentations, we will also see cover crop and green manure uh, as a way to keep the uh, healthier vineyard. But of course, uh, this uh, no, is not always enough. And this is the main aim of organic agriculture, let's say, to have a well-balanced vineyard in which uh, the vineyard is resilient per se. But of course, in many situations, we need the technical tools. And the technical tools that we use more are the chemicals, uh, the synthetic chemicals very often, or inorganic chemicals. And uh, there has been uh, an increasing attention on this side as well, um, removing, uh, uh, deleting the usage of uh, chemicals with a high impact. Uh, there is an increase, so the European community has reduced by 70% the number of chemicals that is now possibly used. There is a great attention to uh, re the dose reduction, a great attention to how we apply the products uh, so that they are they give uh, an effective uh, control uh, and also should development the physiological aspects of the plant so knowing how to apply the products and uh, which are the products that are now available of course the first uh, ones uh, uh, the first product that we can use for disease control are the plant protection products the ppp uh, the plant protection products are the products that have been registered and tested for being efficient in controlling specific diseases. But if we want to reduce uh, the impact of the pesticide, which is the plant protection products, we can also um, uh, use side by side of them uh, other products that, that can have a role in plant protection. In particular, there are um, um, plant protection products that have been recently developed that uh, are uh, included uh, in these four main uh, um, groups, the biopesticides, the botanicals, so the plant extracts that have an activity against fungi, and uh, the substances of animal origin, uh, we, we can use ketosan, milk, uh, natural substances like minerals, uh, like uh, potassium bicarbonate. So different products that have a low, very low or no 
impact actually on uh, the environment, but still have a real efficiency against the pathogens. Some of them uh, also act with a defense induction activity. They act as elicitors. I must say that uh, when we started the project, uh, there weren't uh, actually many products registered uh, as uh, uh, defense inducers, actually, there were just uh, synthetic pro products on that with this type of activity. But now there are some few products that uh, are quite uh, efficient on this side. Uh, beside the uh, products that are registered for plant protection, there are, as I was saying, some uh, side um, support substances that can be uh, used to reduce the impact of fungicides. The alternative tools uh, can include the, the plant strengtheners that in Italy and a few other European countries are a real category of products that um, are natural products that have no impact uh, on uh, the environment, uh, like you see properly from uh, bees, silica gel or food vegetable oils and so on. There are 14 substances that enhance the resistance of plants to harmful organisms, sometimes acting as physically, uh, sometimes just uh, making the plants stronger. And these are uh, a good uh, side uh, uh, efficient group of products. Then another product, another type of product that has been uh, quite recently been uh, definitely registered as uh, uh, plants that can, uh, um, uh, can help the uh, plant disease uh, uh, management are the basic substances. Basic substances are again uh, not the plant protection products, but products that can be useful in disease control. It's a real definition. They can help, even if they don't have a very direct action on, uh, the, uh, on the pathogen, but uh, they, uh, they help the interaction. They help in interacting the interaction. And uh, another uh, group of substances that, that uh, officially is not uh, at all involved in uh, plant protection, but that can have a, a strong support action to uh, the management of, uh, the, um, of the disease control are um, products that are uh, now uh, classified as fertilizers or biostimulants, as we were mentioning in the questions, that um, why these products that are uh, aimed for uh, nutrient uh, absorbance, that they should support the nutrition of the plant and the help of the plant in uh, uh, reacting to the um, abiotic stresses. Why can we use them as uh, support in control, because some of them, even if they are classified as biostimulants, they also have a side effect as defense inducers. They can be eliciting substances. They can push the plant to react and to stresses, and this can be efficient also against biotic stresses. So they can be a, a support in the management of a vineyard in this case. And what is the tool that we tested in this project? As we have seen in the introduction, in this project, we have involved different stakeholders and we tested the solutions in the productive world, so with farms. Uh, so we, we tried if these uh, alternative solutions could be applicable, could be efficient, and how. So one thing that we used to um, support us in supporting the plants is the decision support systems. The decision support systems are simply the uh, application of the mathematical models, uh, the models that represent uh, the development of a disease based on the weather stations data, so rain, temperature, and so on. Uh, and uh, these data are elaborated by um, 
a software that uh, helps the uh, grower to understand which are the um, the stages of the development of the disease he is uh, interested in and uh, therefore understanding which are the risky stages in the disease development so we uh, we um, set uh, the weather stations in uh, three vineyards uh, in the uh, farm in this uh, farm in the Chianti Classico area. And uh, we divided uh, the vineyard uh, in different portions uh, that were treated in different ways. We applied integrated pest management and uh, integrated pest management with a 50% reduction in plant protection products, organic protection, and again, compared with 50% reduction in, in uh, copper and also sulfur, actually. Uh, anyway, so 50% reduction in, in organic uh, uh, plant protection products. And then we also left uh, a side on a uh, uh, sort of control treatment uh, with no plant protection product at all. Uh, what uh, so these are the different treatments that we uh, assessed and uh, the different diseases that we. Um, monitored and this is an image of the um what the disease the decision support system uh, offers you see you can see the how the disease is developing if there are risky stages and so on uh, we prepared different protocols in which uh, what did we do we used those are very low impact uh, uh, environmental impact products uh, the fertilizers and biostimulants to um, substitute some treatments uh, in uh, some uh, moments of the season or to reduce the amount of chemicals that we are using so we had the typical uh, farm uh, integrated pest management process protocol and side, side by side, the 50% reduction where we substituted some uh, treatments with uh, these uh, um, fertilizers or biostimulants that had the ability to induce the plant to react, uh, to be ready to react to uh, the diseases. And this is very important. These products are not uh, chemicals that act on the pathogens. So they don't need to be given immediately when you have the infection, but uh, we need to learn how to use them considering that they have to stimulate the plant to uh, be ready. Uh, so they have to activate it to react when uh, it gets in contact with the uh, pathogen. And the same for the organic production. So, uh, as for powdery mildew, powdery mildew is actually uh, you, often the main problem in uh, the hills of Tuscany, but uh, with uh, the um, different protocols with the strong plant protection uh, products reduction, as you see here, for example, we have the integrated pest management, um, organic uh, uh, protection 50% reduction or uh, zero sulfur we still had quite a good protection just using uh, defense inducer products so for this disease the uh, defense inducer products that we used had actually quite an efficient uh, uh, gave quite an efficient protection uh, and we also reduced uh, strongly the chemicals that we used so i show you only the results uh, that we obtained in the last year because uh, they were just uh, quite the same in the three years actually and you see both the conidia infection and ascosporic infection the disease was really always very low despite that there was no protection by chemicals at all in um, in the output of this uh, the uh, decision support system we used the uh, protection by plant protection products uh, is represented by these uh, yellow uh, or blue areas so when uh, you see all yellow, it means that there are chemicals that are protecting the vegetation. Here, there is none. And still, we had only 0.1% disease incidence. But uh, the story is different to when we get to downy mildew. Downy mildew uh, needs much more attention in the timing. 
and uh, also we'll need uh, different comparison in the different efficacy on uh, this defense induction by this product. Anyway, we see that compared to the uh, treatment where we had no chemicals, no uh, plant protection products specifically devoted to plant protection, we still had uh, quite a, a high reduction in uh, the disease uh, with the 50% uh, usage of chemicals, both in the, the organic and in the integrated pest management. And you see the severity was very low compared to the um, only uh, defense inducers uh, vineyard. And uh, what do we see? That uh, when we had an increase in uh, the incidence of the disease after treating uh, with uh, um, defense inducers uh, um, accompanying uh, the plant protection product, so high reduction of chemicals, 50%, when we had the disease, it was because we used the defense inducers, well, the farm used the defense inducers in a moment in which there were these red diamonds. The red diamonds are the way in which the, the decision support system shows the risk of infection. What is the message here? That um, these products are uh, helping the plant to react, but they cannot be left alone in a high risk moment because otherwise the disease will immediately start to increase. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, these uh, trials were made to show to the grower the challenges in using these products, the attention that they need to be uh, taken on this. Again, here we have quite the same uh, uh, effect. Uh, there are infections that were not covered by plant protection products at all. And uh, uh, the resistant uses alone were not uh, sufficient. But if you have uh, um, see a, an, a treatment with a chemical uh, in uh, the uh, when there is a strong risk of infection, you have a much lower impact of the disease. In uh, the second year of the trial, uh, there was a lower disease pressure. Uh, this was very uh, useful for us in this process of uh, learning and comparing the different solutions, because it shows that uh, in this year, we had no difference. Actually, we even had some lower um, incidence of the disease, uh, we had anyway no statistical difference uh, if uh, we used the full doses of the integrated pest management uh, with the full uh, chemicals, synthetic chemicals usage, or 50%. You see, the 50% EPM had the same or even lower uh, percentage of disease, and the same result also in organic production. So uh, both for severity and incidence. So with low disease pressure, pressure the um, substitution of uh, um, the chemicals with uh, these support products is very useful, which means that if we learn and understand which are the risky moments in which we need to use stronger products, but also we learn to understand when we can avoid them, we can really reduce the impact of fungicide a lot. And again, here uh, we have uh, uh, no infection and the resistance inducers uh, were uh, perfectly efficient. Okay, so, uh, here we see the different, I showed you different vineyards, I can't the results of the, show you all the details, but you see that uh, there were differences in the disease incidence between the three different vineyards, depending on the, the exposure, where they were uh, more uh, susceptible uh, because of the position. But anyway, uh, with the, the um, 50% reduction, we still had a, a 
in all situations the a strong uh, quite a good efficiency of the protection even uh, with the reduced uh, impact of fungicides the last year 2020 uh, we again had uh, some uh, good results with the 50 percent even if here we had uh, some increase in the organic 50 percent and you see that it's, uh, uh, even if it's lower than uh, no uh, chemicals, but still we have some disease here. What did you learn? What did we learn from uh, from this trial? Again, we had uh, some infections in a specific moment. So the final result is linked to one mistake, let's say. So a moment in which the um, defense inducers were left alone in front of uh, in a moment in which there was a strong uh, uh, a very strong uh, um, pressure of the disease so as uh, this is a game place uh, we are uh, doing all these trials to learn and uh, use this product we can uh, confirm that uh, these products can help a lot if used uh, uh, with a great attention to the risk stages. So we have uh, lots to learn in the usage of these products, but uh, they are surely one tool that we can use uh, to associate to uh, the chemicals. It's uh, of crucial importance to uh, use the risk assessment by uh, decision support systems and uh, it will be also very important to relate these results to the quality of the grapes and um, yeah and also to remember that we had anyway a great gain in uh, reduction of the amount of chemicals that were applied so i uh, thank you for your attention and uh, my colleague will uh, talk to you about similar results or even better actually on table grape thank you Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Laura. So I think uh, we, we can we can listen to to Marco before seeing the the following lot of set of uh, polls. So Marco, you are able to share your screen now. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. okay we, we we will see it perfectly. So let's go. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's funny that the title of my presentation is the longest, but first of all, let me just reassure you that my presentation will not be as long as the title itself. My name is Marco Pierucci, and I, I've been working uh, in the Life Green Great project uh, since the beginning of the project as a crop expert of Prima Forma Company, and uh, I'm a partner in the Studio Associato Agronomi in Vigna too. Uh, you may hear something in common among the different presentations. And it's fair since uh, uh, we are talking about a common, complex, uh, uh, very complex uh, uh, project. So, uh, as an introduction, let's start with a modern example of a global approach in crop protection strategies. The disease control is founded both on agronomic choices on the left side of the slide and on crop protection strategies on the right side of the slide. And among the crop protection strategies based on natural technologies, there is the use of some compounds which uh, can trigger the ISR and the SAR metabolic plant pathways, the so-called resistance inductors, or as someone prefers to call them, elicitors. The crucial importance of the decision support system is to be emphasized, as nowadays no one can develop rational crop protection strategies without this kind of useful focused and organized information. The goal uh, of Life Green Grapes agrees with the Farm to Fork European Commission strategy, with, uh, which will take actions uh, to reduce 50% the use of risk uh, of chemical pesticides by uh, 2030, and reduce by 50% the use of the more hazardous pesticides by uh, 2032. To this end, the Commission will revise uh, the sustainable use of pesticides, enhance provisions on IPM, integrated pest management, and promote greater use of alternative ways to protect harvests from pests and diseases. 
resistance inductors, or as we call them uh, in the listors, are included among all these uh, alternative to pesticide ways. Today, uh, there are some listors registered as fungicides, but none of these recent products were included in the light green gray product. Uh, in the protocol, since uh, light green gray product, light green gray product took shape in the years when there were still no products with an illicit or, with an illicit or action registered within the pesticide category. So let's start with the, um, the lo location of the Fratelli Italian Sapulian vineyards involved in the light green gray project. This is the location, geographic location. Uh, well, uh, the vineyards are characterized by pergola or big top training planted on a flat area just uh, 10, 10 meters above uh, sea level. There are two cultivars included in the project. Uh, a white one that uh, is uh, uh, an early ripening cultivar Thompson seedless, and the red one that is a medium late ripening cultivar that is the crimson seedless. Uh, the light green grape project for table grapes included three different protocols. Company standard IPM protocols, uh, integrated pest management, uh, light green grapes 50% fungicide reduction original pro protocol, and the light green grapes 100% fungicide reduction original protocol. It is an extreme uh, stress, a stress test. The most important of whom was the 50% reduction protocol, which is the main goal of the Light Green Graves project itself. Okay, uh, how the treatment strategy was determined? We, we had an, a graphic approach. What does it mean? Uh, let's see. Okay, let me just remind some few information as an introduction on elicitors. Uh, these metabolic mechanisms are peculiar, uh, the peculiar characteristics of the plant innate immunity. Uh, we have the Systemic Acquired Resistance, or SAR, and it is focused on the activity of salicylic acid and working in three steps, essentially. Perception from pathogens, signal transmission, and induction of defense mechanisms. The other is the Induced Systemic Resistance, the ISR, uh, that is focused on the activity of ethylene and yasmonic acid. And uh, it works in four steps, essentially. The perception from non-pathogenic population and the group promoting rhizobacteria. Uh, then a sig signal transmission, defense preparation or priming, and induction of defense mechanisms. Well, just to say that uh, the systemic acquired resistance is, is a more spontaneous in the play. Uh, um, it is a Mechan naturally mechanism, uh, natural mechanism associated with contact with the pathogen. The ISR must be stimulated beforehand because it is less spontaneous, but it's, it is a reaction that uh, consumes less energy in the plant. In any case, the two, uh, the systemic acquired resistance and the induced systemic resistance, are phenomena uh, not in a they are not in antagonists and can be simultaneously present within the plant. So the elicitors are compounded that activate the natural defenses of the plant uh, and they must be uh, used preventively and the booster treatment must be applied to restore the response, uh, the response level. And let's see our graphic approach. Here you have the characteristic activity curve of the elicitors. That is a bell shaped curve um, with a, a maximum protection within seven days, uh, a theoretical maximum duration of 12, maximum 14 days, but it's not so fair to, to consider 14 days. Just think about that the, the, you have the maximum protection between the fifth and the uh, eighth uh, day from the treatment. And it is necessary to repeat the application to recharge the plant reaction uh, against pathogens. Okay, and this is the characteristic activity curve of the chemical fungicides. Uh, it's, it's a sigmoid curve, and it's typical of all the chemical fungicides. It includes uh, copper and sulfur, for example. 
uh, they have uh, maximum immediate protection at the, at the very first days of the treatment and the theoretical, uh, theory, theoretical maximum duration of 15, uh, 14 or 15 days. Uh, some, some compounds have got the retroactivity action for, for example, cytotropic or systemic products. Uh, so there is a use for these products for the chemicals from the food side. Generally, there is a unique dose, or in any case, a tight range between the maximum and the minimum dose indicated on the label. Since it is not possible to decrease the dose applied in each treatment, I mean, under the only dose on the label, uh, therefore, to reduce the quantity of chemical fungicides, it is necessary necessary to lengthen the interval between the two treatments. And let's see what happens when we alternate fungicides with elistos alone. Uh, when the curves of the two types of product overlap, a summation effect of the respective activity towards the pathogen is produced. Within certain limits, the results, I mean the sum of effect tube, the violet one, allows to further distance the interval between two fungicide treatments without the control on the pathogen collection completely. This is the 50% protocol application method we have adopted in uh, integrated pest management protection for table grade. Let's see timing of crop protection conventions applying the different table grade stages. Oh, this showed on the next three slides of the protocols uh, for the table grapes. Uh, for the three years of the project, these protocols were quite the same. So we had uh, thesis number one, uh, it's a company standard IPM protocol. Thesis number two is lightning grapes, 50% fungicide reduction original protocol. And the number three, we have the uh, lifeline grapes 100% reduc fungicide reduction original protocol. Let me remind you that uh, this is number two was the most important pro protocol of the lifeline grapes project since it was focused on the 50% fungicide reduction main goal. In thesis number two, in red, uh, fungicide treatments are isolated uh, with red cycle. Also, this. And um, as you can see, comparing these stages to companies IPM, half of the fungicide treatments were cut off, substituted by elicitors alone, with a 10 or 12 days interval between each spray intervention. Um, in the charts, every fungicide spray treatment is indicated with a dot, uh, with different colors for each disease. Uh, the first chart is a summary of the company's IPM strategy. This is the, the IPM stage. Uh, the second chart uh, is a, a summary of the lightning grapes 50% fungicide reduction original product. All the missing fungicide treatments are here are highlighted in green. So we have one avoid treatment against uh, gray mold, six avoided treatments against powder mildew, and four avoid treatments against dark mildew. I mean, comparing to the IPM standard company's treatment. And therefore, we had eight spray intervention in the 50% reduction versus 14 companies' IPM strategy. And uh, 12 IPM products versus uh, 23. In the thesis number three, that was an extreme, uh, extreme thesis, uh, we had the one avoid treatment against gray mold, 12 avoid treatments against powder mildew, and five avoid treatments against down against down mildew. That is to say, free spray, spray intervention only three at the beginning or, of the season versus 14 companies, companies IPM strategy and five IPM products versus 23. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, this thesis was an extreme attempt, the, the, the third, the 100% the reduction, was an extreme attempt to stress the efficacy of the lysidors and to point out their related possible issues too. Uh, this was not meant to be something to advise in the future, but only a stress test for the vineyard management. Anyway, 
although nobody will never completely avoid the chemical crop protection against fungal pathogens as in the field experiment. This is something to think about. Let's see the crop protection against fung uh, fungal pathogens results. Uh, we had the no difference among the three different phases in all the three years. Very good, very good result. An excellent control of the life to invade 50% protocols over all the pathogens, exactly like the company IPN strategy. So we can easily say that the project main goal was fully achieved. Let's see just let's see just a snapshot of the uh, on the yield effect in the 2019, for example. The analysis variance excluded significant difference in productivity uh, between the thesis for both varieties. Uh, therefore, despite the modest difference recorded, the green grapes management strategies were not found to be influencing the productivity of the plant. Let's see uh, the critical issues that the table grape grower has to face. Unfortunately, they are seven. First is rest, our residues, uh, the requests from the larger supermarket chains, They're very, very, very uh, limiting. Uh, second, organoleptic and appearance quality, the shelf life, the selling price that depends on residues too, and operator health. Manual operation and downtime are really important. Environmental impact and economic sustainability. Let's see about the residues. We have a big challenge of residues in the large supermarket chain. This is just a general example of a table grade residues analysis report at harvest related to a standard table grade production, not the light green grapes protocol. The MLR uh, is the maximum legal residue admitted by law. So, see how lower than the legal limits are these numbers. A percentage from less than 1% to a maximum of 35% of the minimum, uh, the maximum legal residue. So, it seems to be it seems to be a very good result, but. With these good results, only in one of the largest supermarket chain, the production was allowed to be bought and sold in the stores. That means that only one of the international supermarket brands uh, would buy the grape production. It's something very hard for the grower. Although his production is largely compliant with the official legal parameters, he can't sell to a wide selection of international supermarket chain. That's why the live green grapes project can be so important for table grape growers. 50% less fungicides used in the field means approximately 50% less fungicides residues in the fruit, and therefore much more probability to be in the right commercial residues range at harvest. Concluding remarks. Uh, with Light Green Grapes project, we have dealt with an integration of different types of treatment through the application of the hardware concept, as some, someone had just uh, said before. Uh, the development of the disease can be controlled and reduced by applying a number of hurdles against, against the pathogens. Each of these hurdles contributes to a certain extent of the reduction of the disease. Elicitors are one of these hurdles. Synergistic effect can be obtained through the integration of various hurdles in a, a, a rational strategy. We have just begun to learn how to, cor uh, to correctly apply elicitors within a modern hardware concept. Uh, cr within a, uh, our, a modern hardware concept, crop rotation strategy for a significant reduction in agricultural chemical impact. This was only uh, one of the first hurdles to have been investigated and applied, uh, and many others are missing to be studied and integrated correctly in a global sustainable production protection strategy. Um, so, thank you for your kind attention, and please don't hesitate to send questions if you have any of them. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh... Marco, very interesting uh, presentation too. And uh, before to uh, give the floor to Mikalakis, uh, just a couple of questions more to our attendees. 
about uh, our uh, project uh, uh, Green Grapes. Uh, the Green Grapes project works on several uh, teams. We will see them in a couple of questions because uh, the system allows to put only five uh, answers at a time. So the first three, and we give uh, the option to select uh, maximum two of, uh, of them, is uh, uh, which of the following terms of the Life Green project, project that you think are most useful in relation to your activity? So in the, in the first part of the question, the options are increase in soil biodiversity, increasing the production of organic cuttings, increasing the production of mycorrhized cuttings. And I let you a few seconds more to, to vote. And uh, and where we will see your your options. Of course, the the sum will be more than hundred percent because you are allowed to vote more than uh, than one option. Okay, let's see the first result to to these three. Um, fields. So increase in soil biodiversity is 86%, the production of organic cuttings 51%, and 27% the increase in the production of mycorrhized cuttings. Okay, and the next one to complete the question, the same question and the five options more reduction of pesticides for the production of wine grapes, reduction of pesticides for the production of table grapes, evaluation of alternative crop protection products to the products containing um, uh, copper, effects on the quality and quantity of protocol uh, final productions, and the effect on the strategies proposed by the project. In this case, uh, uh, we ask you to limit to three options uh, your um, your selections, your, your votes. Let's wait a few seconds more. Maybe these questions are a bit more difficult than the the previous one. Okay, let's go to see the the results. So, 58% of you uh, think is a uh, very interesting the reduction of pesticides for the wine grapes. Only 4% uh, uh, people interested in reduction of pesticides for the production of table grapes. 19% the evaluation of alternative products to treat. Uh, to protect the crop, 13% uh, the effects on quality and quantity of the production, and 6% uh, the effect on the strategy proposed by the project. Okay, now uh, last but not least, uh, Michalakis Christoforo, I hope I pronounced well the, the name, from Cyprus uh, Technological Univers University of Technology. Uh, Michalakis, you should be able to share your screen, great, and to show in a full screen your presentation. Okay. We see your screen. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, you can see my screen? Yeah, we can hear you too. So you can go. So, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the, the Cyprus uh, case scenario uh, that we perform here uh, in, in Cyprus in uh, a table grape uh, vineyard. First of all, I want to say a few things uh, about uh, my country and uh, viticulture in my country. Uh, we grow vines from the ancient uh, times and uh, we may have uh, uh, the oldest wine in the world it's called Kumandaria 
uh, uh, which is still uh, we we still produce it uh, in Cyprus uh, until nowadays. Um, about the project, uh, as, sorry, about the the table grapes, we mainly grow Sultanina grape, and uh, with uh, the wine. Uh, Grapes, we have uh, our local varieties, which is uh, mainly the Mavrox in Isteri Maratheftico, but the last 20 years we also introduced uh, other varieties uh, uh, coming from abroad. This is a map of, uh, of Cyprus showing the wine routes, uh, the areas where we grow uh, grapes. It's mainly in the south and the south uh, west area of Cyprus, and uh, it's been divided in uh, uh, seven sections uh, according to the climatic conditions, the soils, etc. And hopefully, in the near future, to be able to create terroirs for this area uh, to help the growers. Uh, in the future. This is uh, a picture indicating uh, the way we cultivate wine by yards in Cyprus. It's a sloping terrace, uh, not an easy job. It's very difficult to work in this uh, kind of uh, conditions. And uh, you can find this type of uh, cultivations up in the mountains. We also have the flat terraces. Uh, that you can find them also in uh, the mountains, but also in the in the sea level areas. Uh, it's more easy to to work in this type of conditions, and uh, you can find uh, besides the wine vineyards also table grape uh, growing in this uh, type. Uh, regarding the table grapes, we have two systems, the trellis systems and the cup system. Uh, the majority nowadays is uh, on a trellis system, uh, even though the one we chose for our uh, project was uh, the cup system. And uh, that's because uh, we have uh, a big issue here in Cyprus regarding the, the fields. Uh, the area of each field is very small in Cyprus. And uh, for the project, we wanted more than 15 uh, acres. And uh, that was not easy to find, although we have large areas with uh, grapes. This is uh, uh, a map showing uh, where we uh, attended our experiments. You can see uh, this uh, dot here, it's a village named Alectora. And the blue line is the route from our university, the Cyprus University of Technology, which is uh, located in Limassol in the south of Cyprus. And it's about uh, 20 minutes uh, drive. This is uh, a drone image from uh, the Alectora vineyards uh, in combination with a huge area of, of olives. Uh, the whole area is uh, cultivated with uh, Sultanina table grape. Also this one from uh, showing the south. And all those grapes for that, for, from that area uh, are harvested in uh, June, mid-June to late uh, June. Uh, where they uh, clean uh, the grapes, they pack them, and uh, they send them abroad, abroad uh, mainly in Germany. Now let's go to our experimental uh, design. Uh, we chose a plot which, will, which was more than 15 uh, acres, difficult to find. We have uh, the 100% reduction area, which was five acres, the 50% reduction, and the third one was uh, pure organic farming. Actually, it was exactly what the grower was doing all the previous years. This is the protocol uh, provided by our colleagues in the project, uh, which was following the phenological phase of the grapes. 
I have to mention that the, each year we have a different timing of the beginning of the phenological uh, cycle, and uh, that was due to the different climatic uh, conditions that occurs uh, in Cyprus. <coughs> In the, in the plot, we placed a meteorological station provided by the, the project, which, which was uh, providing us with the main uh, indicators, uh, the rainfall, the temperature, and uh, leaf wetness, and the moisture. Uh, the combination of uh, the meteorological station with uh, the DSS system, I have to say uh, that it was uh, user friendly. So I believe that each farmer who chose to use uh, a DSS system, uh, he, he or her will find it uh, very easy to use. And uh, it was very useful to monitor uh, the diseases. Of course, we validated uh, the DSS system uh, all the three years by uh, going into the field and uh, trying to see uh, if what the DSS is uh, saying, the alerts that we uh, had from the DSS was actually observed in the field. And I have to say that uh, the DSS was accurate in all cases. Furthermore, uh, this type of system uh, also provides you with uh, uh, the cooper that is used uh, every time uh, in the field. And based on the new regulations that we have to decrease the amount of cooper, uh, we have to have an average of four kilos uh, of cooper per hectare. And uh, I have to say that uh, the growers still have to reduce uh, the amount of uh, cooper they use. Believe me, they use way more than uh, the four kilos per hectare. You have seen this uh, picture uh, today, uh, again, uh, from Laura. Uh, it's what the DSS is providing us. Uh, with the blue dots, uh, you see the germination. With uh, the green, the release of the spores the dispersal of the spores, and uh, the red ones, it's the infections. Um, also, uh, I'm presenting you here uh, what the grower uh, sprayed uh, as far as uh, the cooper concerned. He sprayed uh, two extra uh, times that were not necessary. Uh, we also uh, follow him once in the end. And uh, the result uh, that occurred from uh, our uh, monitoring uh, uh, visits indicated that uh, these two extra sprays uh, were not actually necessary because in the end we had we had no infection uh, in the field. And in the graph, uh, I, I, I present to you the amount of sulfur and the cooper, cooper with blue, sulfur with yellow, that was used for 2018 and uh, the reduction we had in 2019. This is the, uh, uh, the disease monitoring plan. We had uh, four microplots in each uh, plot. And we observe uh, nine plants per, per, per plot. We, uh, we observed uh, for disease and pests, mainly for uh, downy mildew and powdery mildew. We didn't observe any uh, botrytis in all the three years. We also collect soil leaves and roots from these uh, pl micro plots to test to to search for uh, microbiota, uh, bacteria, fungus, and protist, as also and nematodes, as also for uh, microfauna, uh, arthropods in the soil. We also monitor the development of the plants uh, for new leaves, the blooming period, uh, seeding, and ripening. And uh, as I said, we had different phenological uh, cycles each year, which was mainly 
due to the different climatic uh, conditions that we face here. And uh, we also had uh, some activity in the laboratory uh, by uh, observing the grape uh, development, size, the sugar acids, content, color, and turgidity. Uh, this is what we observed uh, and how we use the protocol that was given by CREA in the lab. There is no reason to go through all this. And uh, this is an Excel sheet just to present to you how we uh, collected uh, the data for uh, disease monitoring. Uh, we uh, searched for the incidence and the severity of the diseases, as mentioned by Laura by uh, looking at the presence and the symptoms of each pathogen. And this is um, an image showing uh, the disease risk evolution given by uh, the DSS. Uh, I'm only showing this just to tell you that uh, although we, we, are protect, we protect our um, product, our grapes, because we harvest uh, in, in June, uh, we have to uh, try uh, these scenarios um, for uh, wine grapes, because the wine grapes in Cyprus are harvested in uh, September and October, especially the red ones. And uh, as you can see from the DSS, we do have a presence, continuous presence of downy mildew and powdery mildew uh, in, uh, in September. This uh, indicates the month September. So we have to, maybe it was a mistake that we didn't include um, the wine grapes in the project, but it doesn't matter, we can continue and um, uh, use or repeat uh, the protocols used in green grapes also in uh, the wine grapes uh, Buying yards. Uh, of course, I haven't mentioned the GDT, the grape vine trunk diseases, uh, because in our plot, in the experimental plot, although it is an old vine yard, we didn't find uh, uh, GDT. Uh, the reason is because uh, the farmer is very cautious, he uses his, his own uh, tools. Uh, he doesn't allow anyone to enter and cut anything in his plot. Uh, not even me, he was giving me uh, his own tools. He didn't allow me to use my own. And uh, for a good reason, of course, he knows what he's doing. But I have to mention that in Cyprus, we do have GDTs, uh, all these uh, fungus, and uh, they are all, all over the, the island. Here I present you some uh, results regarding the cluster width, the cluster weight, uh, the cluster height, and also some of the analysis we have done. Um, the, um, the statistical differences, uh, there have been statistical differences, but uh, they were not uh, um, uh, very high to show high differences, of course. Uh, the 100% deduction was very similar to, to the 50% deduction, but we had some differences in um, the organic uh, uh, production. <clears throat> Here I present to you the soil analysis. On, uh, the, uh, on the left, you can see the soil uh, bacteria that were tested uh, with the 16S uh, uh, with using NGS technology. And on the right, you can see the fungus and the protist. From here, we had a lot of uh, ascomicota, and uh, we, ha we have to continue this to see if uh, all these ascomicota are plant pathogens or if uh, they are beneficial uh, fungus in the soil. Here we have the nematodes. We had uh, a large amount of plant parasitic nematodes, 50% uh, of the total. And uh, most of them were uh, in the family of Haplolemitae. We also had uh, Tylenchitae and uh, Paratylenchitae. 
And from soil arthropods, this was uh, a good result. We had a lot of columbola. Uh, this is a good indicator showing that the soil was uh, in a healthy condition. In this uh, <coughs> uh, picture, uh, I present uh, the grapevine cultivation sustainability assessment. Uh, in which uh, we used uh, the usustain.net uh, software uh, in a method that uh, quantifies the emissions and the resource uh, uh, based on both the life cycle analysis and the purely agronomic uh, aspects. Um, it's uh, actually um, together with indicators, uh, uh, the life cycle assessment methodologies, they used uh, the carbon footprint, the water footprint, uh, footprint etc. And uh, what we found here is that uh, regard, uh, our applications through the live green grapes projects showed that uh, regarding the impact on health, air, uh, water and soil, uh, the impact was uh, in, a, in a very low levels and uh, only on uh, biodiversity was uh, in a medium uh, uh, state and uh, that's due to the use uh, of, uh, of Hooper and sulfur. And uh, I want to finish uh, my presentation with uh, an afterlife uh, uh, idea that we are planning to, to continue. We noticed uh, using uh, drone images that um, uh, with an RPG image, you cannot see any difference, but uh, using an NDVI image, we, could, we were able to see uh, some differences regarding uh, the plant's health. Uh, uh, three years after the, the use of biostimulants, and uh, defense inducers. And uh, with uh, the red uh, uh, dots, you can see uh, the plants that are healthy. And if you remember, here uh, is uh, the 100% reduction in the use of biostimulants or defense inducers. Here was the 50% and here was the non, uh, the organic, uh, 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 treatment. Uh, so we will continue to to monitor this. Uh, also here with uh, a phone pictures indicating the green leaves in the hundred percent and uh, the brown leaves in the organic. And those pictures were taken in uh, in August. So. What we believe that we might manage is that uh, we might be able to uh, turn over the stress levels from the graves and uh, turn them back to have healthier plants with the use of uh, biostimulants. <clears throat> Thank you for your attention and uh, hopefully you have some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Miki. Uh, before the question uh, of the public, we have the last three and a very quick uh, poll. And uh, so the first one, uh, very simple, is uh, do you think that the viticultural ecosystem can be improved by use of biostimulant and or by resistance inducer products? Options, yes or no? So, very, very simple question. And uh, I see there is a, a strong uh, opinion from one option that we will see in a while. So, it's a uh, unanimity, 100% say yes. This is very, very good. Let's see with the two following and the last questions. Uh, do you believe the 
products, uh, biostimulants and the resistance inducer are effective for improving the vineyard health. Similar to the first one, but more focused. Only a few seconds to show the, the result to, to leave some uh, time for uh, for question and meanwhile if you have a question please uh, type them in the question dialog box okay let's see the results in this case uh, 94 percent uh, say yes uh, these uh, such products could be very interest effective improving the vineyard yield health sorry and only six percent of you say no and uh, Finally, the very last uh, poll uh, is, uh, uh, do you think uh, that stimulants or resistance inducers are economically sustainable for, in your situation, in your uh, farm, uh, in, for your work? Because, uh, of course, also the economical issues are interesting to, to consider. And uh, meanwhile, I ask all the speakers to switch their camera on and their microphone too, for, uh, to be ready for the, the discussion, and even to, to comment with the results, why, why not? So, okay, we can see in this case, 78 percent of you says yes these uh, these new products are economically sustainable and 22 percent says i don't think so okay thank you thank you very much uh, so my first question to all the speaker is uh, what do i think about uh, these uh, results in, in the poll Maybe Marco, Laura, you want to to comment? Yes, it's a ni very nice result. Uh, I mean, sometimes we were, were afraid uh, uh, about uh, the, the low enthusiasm from from people, from growers, uh, concerning uh, the use of uh, listeners uh, in uh, and modern strategy. But you know, maybe in the last years, some something is changing and uh, without uh, having an uh, illusions i mean but uh, well we maybe the, uh, the light green project green great project has made something uh, has broken the, the the ice like uh, you know um in in the growers mentality laura what do you think no, for sure. Seeing uh, the results uh, is important. Uh, we, the aim of the project was to show in practice in the commercial vineyards how the things work. And uh, it's an alternative tool. It's one of the tools we can use. It's not the solution, but it's one of the solutions that we can uh, put together to, to have a better results. I mean, we have seen improvements, not only saving products i mean using less products but even better results so in different conditions it's a matter of learning to use them to know them and to use them good great it uh, also it, it is very important to consider it the economic questions because um, the price uh, now is very is very high, but um, I think that a, a larger use uh, can reduce it. Uh, is uh, and I hope in the future uh, we can uh, use uh, very quickly these uh, these products. Yeah, this is a, a very important aspect, uh, and uh, you as as a consultant, Fabio, I guess you have to to face the farm and say, oh yeah, this is interesting, but uh, how much it costs because. Uh, is always the first question they, they do. It is positive, though, that uh, from the poll, if I remember correctly, 
most of them voted that uh, they believe that uh, uh, the users uh, reduced the pesticides in the wine uh, grapes, correct? Yes. So well, the, the question was uh, directed to the wine grapes, yes. But I guess for the table with grapes, it's exactly the same. I hope that we have Cypriots uh, watching us in order to, <laughs> to allow us to use them in the future in their uh, plots. Okay. And uh, there is a question uh, for Laura coming from uh, Laïs. Uh, and the question is, uh, uh, these inducers were used only uh, alone or may uh, act in synergy, so more products together? Okay, so there are different products can be, uh, have to be used in a strategy sometimes, uh, so it depends uh, on the, the company. But there are some that really needs to be need to be used in the beginning of the season to give the first start, and then others that are more suitable for uh, setting uh, the, the situation. And uh, they can be used, as we saw in the experiment we showed, uh, they can be used also together with the products uh, at reduced dosage. Uh, of course, we have the problem of using uh, the chemicals uh, at the dosage that is indicated in the uh, in the label. But anyway, the minimum dosage can be used uh, if uh, supported by these products. So I don't know which side she Marisa meant, but uh, I hope this. I don't know if Marco, you want to add anything. Okay, thank you. Um, well, we noticed that the best way uh, to use uh, this, this group of products, this group of compounds is to, um, to, be, uh, to know what kind of crop protection we are going to, to act. Uh, the differences uh, the mostly are in the, in between the IPM and the OPM. Or uh, if we use systemic or, or uh, cytotropic products, uh, the best thing is to alternate, uh, just because you will have a, a very high cost if you get together. And uh, there is no reason to put a systemic uh, fungicide with a, a systemic uh, in, inducer, uh, resistance inducers. So it's uh, quite uh, redundant. Uh, while if you alternate, uh, like uh, we, do, we did uh, in the grape, uh, in the IPM grape uh, table grape uh, project, uh, they works well. While uh, with the, uh, the contact products, uh, as uh, in the organic farming, uh, for example, copper and sulfur and so on, uh, it's better to use match together. Uh, since uh, you will, uh, there is a synerg synergic uh, <clears throat> action uh, between uh, the, the contact product, the contact fungicides, and uh, a systemic uh, elicit or uh, action inside the plant. So it's the best way. So, really, two kinds of use alternative uh, in the IPM and uh, match together. Uh, in the same treatment in the organic treatment. And as maybe more, a lot of people uh, already know, uh, it's not safe to use the listeners more than, for example, in the organic uh, strategies, more than three or four times. Uh, then we, you have to stop for uh, some weeks, for example, two or three weeks, and then uh, come back to use them. Because uh, you can stimulate too much uh, the plant, and maybe you you run the risk to have uh, uh, no effect after the fourth or the fifth uh, treatment. So you you lose money. Okay. 
it's okay. Okay, there is a, an interesting question from also from uh, Nicolò, uh, who is saying, uh, we are an AG tech startup and we are now developing uh, a system of weather station very distributed in the fields and we have also our DSS with artificial intelligence forecasting models. What kind of features do you think we must have in our DSS application? I don't know if Marco, or Laura, or Fabio, or Miki. I don't know what uh, what uh, he really means uh, because I mean the parameters that he needs to measure to know uh, the risk of disease are uh, the usual ones: leaf wetness, uh, humidity, wind, uh, also because it dries the surface and and so on. But of course, the, the weather parameters have to be uh, evaluated with a model that represents the disease, uh, different disease stages. It's not a matter only of, uh, I mean, the, the weather station only can give you the usual risk of uh, the old. Uh, 10, 10, 10 uh, rule or something like that. It, so I don't know if he wants to make a more specific question, but uh, that is it. The, the, whether uh, this, the data are always the same and it's truly good if he can take them in the different positions in the vineyard. It's very important if uh, they learn to distribute the different sensors in different positions so that they have a good picture of the climatic conditions in the vineyard. That is a further improvement you can do. Any other comments? No, yes, because there is a very important the number of the data no, of, um, for the algorithm because uh, uh, is important the position of the station of the the point of the defense uh, in, for the station. Uh, uh, more more point in the vineyard. I have more data and um, I have an, uh, the DSS more sure. I think. Okay. I'm... Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Uh, anyway, if uh, Nicola wants to see to send us more details. Uh, I put in the chat uh, the, the email address of the projects and also the website for further information. Uh, I remember uh, that uh, uh, the recording of this webinar will be available and uh, you will find uh, the link to access them uh, in the follow-up email you will receive uh, tonight. And also, uh, the uh, in that email, uh, Italian agronomist will have the opportunity to give uh, us their, their data to uh, communicate to the, the board of the agronomist for the educational uh, credits. Uh, I have to, to thank uh, all uh, the, the speakers. Uh, maybe I let you give uh, say hello uh, to all the, the public, starting for Laura, of course. Well, the only lady. Thanks. So thanks for uh, staying uh, to, up to the end. And we hope to have you with us in, at the next uh, uh, webinars that we will have uh, in a few weeks to follow April, our April adventure. 14, uh, if I'm not wrong. OK, Mickey. Well, I want to thank everybody for this opportunity to present uh, our results and uh, show the work that we have done. And uh, I will say it again, if uh, any Cypriot uh, grower, farmer was with us today, I want to say that we will try to make a group of uh, farmers that uh, might have uh, uh, meteorological stations in their areas in order to collect the data from them and uh, uh, continue the project 
with uh, the effort of the growers and uh, we believe that it's on their benefit. We already came in contact with uh, the company that provides us with uh, the DSS and uh, if we manage to have uh, a large group in order to be uh, uh, less uh, costly, let's say, uh, for the growers, uh, we will continue this effort and we hope to have uh, better results in the future for them. Okay, Fabio? Uh, thanks, Giuliano. Um, um, I um, thanks for um, this opportunity because um, I don't find uh, many ways to discuss it about the nursery sector. And um, I hope um, in the future uh, that the protocol that um, have discovered into the um, project Life Green Grapes uh, uh, will be used in, uh, in the future in the nursery. Um, the nursery is uh, the, the base, the cornerstone of the, the wine chain. The, it's a very important sector for, uh, uh, for the new vineyard in the future, for longevity and, and in terms of uh, health, healthness is very important. Thanks to, uh, at all, everybody, and uh, stay care. Thanks. Thanks all. And, uh, Marco, is your turn. Yeah, I want. I wish to thank you all of you, uh, especially those uh, who are the survivors of the last minutes, and uh, hope everything everything was clear. And anyway, we invite you to write us uh, for every question. Uh, remember that. Uh, uh, at first, the Life Green Grape project, Green Grapes project was a challenge, a technical challenge for, for us, especially. And uh, but now uh, it can be an opportunity, uh, really, to have uh, some um, orientation uh, for uh, a, a new kind of approach in a modern and sustainable uh, grape protection. So let's go on and uh, let's uh, think about uh, a new world that is, uh, is coming and uh, especially because we have to change something. That's because the European Commission has got this, uh, this uh, goal in the 2030, so it's not easy. <laughs> but uh, we, are, we have been working for this goal uh, since the beginning. So, uh, good night, everybody. Thank you, Marco. And uh, I don't know if William is still uh, connected. To just to yes, yes, I'm connected. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the attention, and uh, have a good evening. Bye, bye. Thank you very much to to you all, and uh, see you soon. Uh, for with the Life Green uh, Grape uh, project. Have a nice uh, evening uh, or afternoon, depending on your timetable. We have people from Brazil attending this, uh, this webinar. So for, for there is just a morning. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.